Who, uh, who did their homework assignment? Uh, yeah. Uh-uh. -uh. Anybody else over here do their homework assignment? Nice haircut, by the way. Anybody else over here do their homework assignment? Did you do it? Did you figure it out? I said I didn't. You didn't. Did not. Did not. Didn't. Anybody figure out the mystery? Does anybody even remember? Don't say anything, because I know you know. Does anybody even remember the question that I asked? What was the question that I asked? Anybody remember? Huh? The back, your backside. Something about your backside. I don't know where her head is. Well, yeah, I do. I guess I do now. I asked, what is the difference between the two copies of the Ten Commandments that Moses brought down from Mount Sinai? What was the difference between them? There's one very significant difference between them. And I asked for you to look that up and figure it out. Now, it sounds like a lot of you people are like me. When it comes to doing the homework assignment, I wait till the very last second. Don't I, Mom? Yeah. And some people, as soon as they get it, they get right on it and got it figured out. They're like the people on Jeopardy that buzz in before Alex Trebek even gets done reading the answer. And they're always right every time. Uh, let's see here. So, did any... Okay, I know Chris figured it out. The difference is, the first copy, God himself carved out the stones. The second copy... God specifically told Moses to carve out the stones. And that, that jumped out at me one day, Gary. Why did God do that? So that's your next homework assignment. Does that sound funny to you? Why would God carve out the first copy and then write the Ten Commandments on it but why would God tell Moses on the second copy to carve it out himself, bring it up to Mount Sinai, and God would carve on there again? Way to go, David Taylor, you win. Do, do what? Yeah, we already discussed it. Oh, I might, I might get to that later. Uh, Revelation chapter 5. Now I'm getting everybody online. Yeah. Uh, Revelation. No. Was it Revelation 5? No, oh, okay, yeah. We're not in 6 yet. All right. Whew. Scared me for a minute. And I saw on the right hand of him... That sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, uh, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? As we 
understand the importance of this book, I will explain to you, I'll probably get to the part, well, I will tell you why God, God carved out the first set of stones and why God told Moses to carve out the second set of stones. It is a cool story. It really is. It, it, when I first saw that, Gary, it, I'm going, God, you don't do anything like that just on a whim. Okay? There has to be a reason why he would do something so weird and so strange as to carve out the first copy, but then make Moses carve out the second copy. Why would he do that? I don't understand that. So I did. I, 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 what I tell you, I have an inquisitive mind. And if there's a mystery or a secret out there, it bugs me to death until I know it. And it's a, it's a character defect as well. And I'm being dead serious. Because if there's secrets about, I, I'm being dead serious, if there's secrets about people, I kind of want to get in on, I want to know what it is. And that's not good for me. I'm admitting to you a fault that I have. And uh, so don't ever gossip around me. That's not, don't ever do that. That is not good for me. All right. Uh, now we were studying the right hand. And uh, we got through quite a bit uh, the significance of the right hand. Um, let's see here. Let me get to, let, I don't remember where we left off. So I'll pick it up right here. And my mouth is real dry this morning, so I'm going to keep my whistle wet from time to time. Psalm 45, 4, and the, and this is the significance of the right hand. This is what we're dealing with. And in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. So, <coughs> excuse me. What he's saying here is whatever is in God's right hand is going to teach us things. And he said terrible things. Now what does he mean by that? He means what he says. When you read Matthew 24 and you find out that in the end times there's going to be earthquakes, pestilences in diverse places, wars and rumors of wars, Nation shall be against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Then you find out in the book of, uh, I can't remember who, uh, I think it was uh, Paul to Timothy. Uh, now we know that in the last days perilous times shall come. Perilous means very dangerous, full of peril, full of danger. Uh, the book of Revelation, part of the book in God's right hand, teaches us that as we near the end, we're going to see the, the, when Jesus opens the very first seal, a fourth of the population of mankind die. Let me, let me make sure I'm right on that. Revelation 6. I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, I heard as it were the noise of thunder and one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had, he had opened this, uh, okay, it's the second seal. Uh, let's see here. Okay. 
There, verse 4, there went unto out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth that they should. Where is it that it, the fourth of the people die? Uh, yeah, verse 8. I looked, and behold, a pale horse. When the four horsemen come out, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with them, uh, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with beasts of the earth. The opening of the first four seals one-fourth of the earth's population die. Now, I love you. I'm, what I'm saying to you is said in love. I'm not trying to be mean about this. But stop blaming uh, Bill Gates for being the one who's going to kill most of the people on the earth. It's not him. And it won't be him. This is God doing this. These, who can open the seals? Does Satan have power to open the seals? No. Who's the only one who can open the seals? Only God. Only Jesus. So when he opens the four seals, uh, somebody get a calculator out. There's 7.2 billion people on the earth. So divide that by four. Let's find out how many people die Anybody figure it out? Huh? Almost two billion people die in the opening of the first four seals. That's more than Dr. Fauci and Bill Gates combined can kill. Okay? So people, read your Bible. And the killing doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. You get into, um, oh, let's see here, you get into the trumpet judgments. In Revelation 8, Oh, I've strayed way off here. But you get into the trumpet judgments in Revelation 8. And here you have the first, in verse 7, the first angel sounded. There followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. There goes your grass, Sterling, on your yard. Yeah, I th the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fires cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. Has that ever happened before? The water becoming blood. Egypt. Yeah, Egypt. There's your, so there's your uh, typology there. Uh, the, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea died and had life and died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many people, men died of the waters because they were made bitter. The fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened and they the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise and i beheld and heard a, a, an angel flying through the midst of the 
uh, heaven saying with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpets of the three angels, which are yet to sound. In other words, the greatest killer of mankind is not man. It's not any man. It's not any company. It's not any organization. It's God. Why is he killing everybody? Because of their sins. God is showing people what he can do when people break God's laws. Uh, so that's back in Psalm 45, 4. Thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. And boy, I talk, you talk about terrible Psalm 48, 10, according to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. They that, uh, Psalm 60, verse 5, they <clears throat> that thy beloved may be delivered, save with thy right hand and hear me. God saves, God saves with the right hand. I like this. God destroys with the right hand. God saves with the right hand. What God used to destroy the earth in the days of Noah, he also used to save Noah and his family in those days as well. It was the water. Uh, Psalm 60 verse 5, That thy beloved may be delivered, save with thy right hand and hear me. Psalm 63, 8, my soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me. Psalm 73, 23, nevertheless I am continually with thee, which thou hast holden me by my right hand. Your right hand and God's right hand together. Psalm 74, 11, why withdrawest thou hand, even thy right hand, pluck it out of thy bosom. Psalm 77, 10, and I said, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. That means you'll remember the stories that are in the Scriptures and they will give you blessing. You'll say, if God can do this for those people in the Bible, God can do the same thing for me. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. In Psalm 78, 54, and he brought them to the border of his sanctuary, even to this mountain which his right hand had purchased. Uh, Psalm 80, verse 50. I'm going to preach a message this morning that will tell you that Jesus is not a thief. He's not, it's, you know, some people say, well, he, you know, Jesus is coming as a thief. He said, yes, as a thief, but to those who are in the day, I'm not coming as a thief. And by the way, Jesus doesn't come to steal us away. He doesn't have to steal us. He's already bought us. We've already been paid for. Amen. Jesus is not a thief. Amen. Um, he purchased, yeah, he purchased the... Uh, the vineyard which thy right hand hath planted and the branch that thou mightest made, that thou madest strong for thyself. The vineyard, the vineyard which his right hand planted. What is the vineyard? Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the... No, he, no I, I, I do this all the time. I am the vine. He did not say that. He said, I am the true vine. Ye are the branches. Any man abideth in me. If he that abideth me and my words abide in him, mm, the same. Mm, mm, mm. I can't quote all of it. I forget it. But you get the idea. Uh, oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. Psalm 108, 6, that thy beloved may be delivered. Save with thy right hand and answer me. Psalm 1, this, think, think Bible every time you see that right hand. Psalm 110, 5, the Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Psalm 118, 15, the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. And, thy, and the right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. 
The right hand of the Lord is exalted, and the right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. This is why in the book of Psalms you'll see a verse that says, Thou hast magnified thy word even above thy name. And we're not supposed to take God's name in vain, are we? No, that tastes like soap if you do that. Trust me. But God magnifies his word even above his name. I had, and I told this story this week. Uh, some sacred name people had to shove a Bible at me and say, have you ever seen a Bible like this? And I said, is it a King James? And they said, it's based on the King James. And in my mind, I'm going, that's not the same thing. And what it was, it was a Hebrew roots sacred name Bible where they had taken out every reference, every time the word Lord and Jehovah and God and Jesus, they took every one of those out and replaced them with uh, Lord was Yahuwah, God was Yahuwah, um, Jesus was Yeshua or Yahusha, some variant of that. In other words, they took God's name out of his word. They altered God's word that he magnified even above his name. They altered it. Boy, it made me mad. Uh, Psalm 138, 7. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Though thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies and thy right hand. Look at this now. Thy right hand shall save me. You want to be saved? Where's, where's every verse in the Romans road found? What are they in the Old Testament? They're in the, all in the New Testament, aren't they, Gary? Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23, Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you want to go to John 3.16 then, go there. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Um, for, uh, Romans 10, 9, 8, 9 and 10. And then 1 John 1, 9. But all of those verses that save people, that remind them that they're sinners and here's how you can be free from your sins. Every one of those verses are in the right side of your Bible. They're in the New Testament of your Bible. You are saved by the right hand of God. And then Psalm, 1, Psalm 41, 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Or this Isaiah, I'm sorry. I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. The right hand of my righteousness. When you listen to me, in our lives, in our lives, all of us, all of you online, have done rotten, evil, nasty, dirty, terrible things in our lives. There's no reason for God to save us other than He just loves us. And He cares about us. And so it says, I will withhold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You will have had, I have had them. You will have them in the future. I will have them in the future days. Where the devil will beat on you, beat on you, beat on you, beat on you and say, you're never going to make it. You're too awful, rotten. You served me. 
What makes you think that you're saved? What makes you think you're righteous? What makes you think that you're going to go to heaven? What is it that makes you think that at all? You are so bad and so guilty. Why are you even in church? Everybody there knows you're a hypocrite and you get up and you read, yea, I will withhold, uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness and tell the devil, devil, excuse me, but my father told me that I'm not redeemed by what I've done. I'm redeemed by what Jesus did for me. Shut up, Satan. Amen. Tell him to shut up. Go back, go bother somebody else. Matthew 25, 33, and he shall set the, oh, look at this. When he judges, where does he put the sheep at? On his right hand. Puts the goats on the left, doesn't he? Matthew 25, 34, and then he said, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. It, was, it, it had been written down ever since the foundation of the world. God wrote your name down in the book. He knew you were, he knew you were going to end up, he knew you were going to end up righteous by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He knew that. Never doubted it. Luke 6, 6, and it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he, watch this, watch this. Here's, here's, how, here's how the Jews, here's another picture how the Jews are going to get saved. That he entered into the synagogue and taught and there was a man whose right hand was withered. So think about all the Jews right now. They all have left hands, figuratively, symbolically speaking, they have the Old Testament. I, I can still see that old rabbi in the airport in Maryland. Watching him, looking at him, reading his Old Testament. Or whatever it was, he was, looked like an Old Testament. And I wanted so bad to talk to him, but I didn't know the words to, talk, to say anything to him. So I kept my mouth shut. By the way, we were at uh, Sam's Friday and there was a whole bunch of guys, young men in suits and ties. Who were they? No, Mormons. Mormon, Mormon missionaries. And I sat there, we, I, we ordered a little hot dog and a pretzel for Graceland to snack on. She was with us. And I sat there and I'm going... I, gotta, I wanna say something to him. And, and I sat there and I sat there and I told Lisa, I said, I'm, I'm sitting here praying, I'm loading my pistol now. I'm hoping one of them comes up over, cause I don't know why they were there, but they were, th th there was probably 15 of them. There was a bunch of them there. And I said, I hope some of them, one of them comes over to me and wants to talk to me. Because I was, I was loading my pistol as I was sitting there eating on that pretzel. I was putting Bible verses together. Come on, say something to me. Not a word, not a word. Not one of them said anything to me. Not one. And I, and I will tell you, I heard, I had a buddy that used to go to Bible college with he was at one time a Mormon missionary and he says, Mike, they don't get saved while they're on their mission. They are so full of what they've been taught that you just can't get it out of them. You just can't do it. And if, by the way, if one of them is weak and, and sees somebody talking to one of their others for a while, they'll jump in the middle of it 
and, and push him to the back and say, deal with me. They, they'll protect each other. Anyway, almost, almost time for the bell, I guess. Did it ring? Who said yeah? All right. But you understand the symbolism of a Jewish man in a synagogue, his right hand being withered. That means the New Testament, he can't use it. It's no good to him. It's sealed. You've seen somebody whose right hand is withered, haven't you? It's, it's all curled up and atrophied. Okay? But what did Jesus do? Let's go to Luke 6. What did Jesus do? Yeah. You know what he did. That's an awfully happy song you got going there, Jared. Luke chapter 6, verse 6. There was a man whose right hand was withered. Verse 7, and the scribes and Pharisees watched him whether he would heal on the Sabbath day that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had withered hand, rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he rose forth and he rose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? And looking around upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand, and he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. Now he is a completed Jew. He's a whole Jew now. Because now he's got the right... You know, how many, you know how many bones are in this hand? 27. Do you know how many books are in your New Testament? 27. Isn't that cool? He's now, this Jew's got it now. And he makes the other Jews mad because they're jealous of him. He's got it. The scribe, oh, they accused him. Looking around, they all. Uh, verse 10, looking around upon them all, he said unto the man, stretch forth thine hand. He did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other, and they were all filled with madness. That means they were, so, they were just out of their mind nuts. And commune one with another what they might do to Jesus. And it came to pass, in, in, in anyway, it made them so angry, they were out of their mind. That this man got his hand restored. That's, that's just pure evil. To have a man whose hand is knurled up like this. And he can't use it. And he gets healed. And you hate Jesus so bad that you want this man's hand to stay withered. That's how evil some people are in this world. They don't want you messing with their religion and their religious ideas. They don't want you messing with that. That's why that woman at that UFO conference kept going to me. <laughs> By the way, I appreciate it. Uh, the, the same conference is going to be in Colorado this year. And I've already had... Uh, one of our families, one of our watcher families, say they will sponsor our trip out there. They'll fly us out there and pay for the hotel. I appreciate that. We haven't made the decision yet, uh, nor the arrangements, but uh, if we do, we'll let you know. Okay? Um, so anyway, just help me pray about that. Okay? All right, let's go to prayer. 
Father in heaven, I love your word. I thank you for it. Father, your right hand has got more power in it, God. All oh, the power is in your right hand. Jesus, Jesus died, rose again on the third day so that he could not just save all of us Gentiles, so he could save all the Jews that need to be saved, that want to be saved. This man who got his right hand unwithered, now he's got power, Lord, to, to feed himself, to work with his own hands, to do, Father, what other men have been doing all their life, God. Father, I pray, Lord, that this man is with you now in the kingdom of heaven because he believed in Jesus Christ. He saw the miracle and he believed in Jesus Christ. Father, likewise, save all of us. Give us power with your mighty right hand, we pray. Bless your word in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen.